everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today's episode covers the much, much anticipated final prep and paint of the foamy camper. Let's get after it. I've got about, I don't know, 24, 30 working hours in what you see behind me since I've shot any video and I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a quick overview of that now. All right, as you can see, things are looking pretty spotty and pretty rough. I've gone through and I've used glazing putty on the small imperfections and we've gone ahead and sanded that back. So this is the different layers you're looking at. These areas are fiberglass poking through. This is our original skim coat of body filler. This is our high build primer you saw me spray last week. And this white stuff on top of that is glazing putty. Same thing over here on the main shell. Just getting ready to shoot this with another layer of high build primer. I know I've still got some small imperfections, but I've kind of gone surface blind to the whole thing. And I'm having trouble differentiating the areas I need to focus on and the areas I don't. It's the next morning and I figured I'd give you an overview. I've went ahead and gone through and spot glazed our pinholes in the door. I've gone through this morning and put a sharpie mark next to all these tiny little imperfections that I want to fix. This just helps you find them at a quick glance when you've got filler trying to kick on you. They're hard to even see when it's an eighth inch sharpie mark. The actual imperfection here is absolutely tiny here's a good shot you can just see this little cluster of pinholes next to this mark here same thing there this one should show up pretty good right in there is just a cluster of pinholes I want to hit with glaze this corner here has a bunch of stuff this morning I'm going through and I'll put catalyzed glaze next to all my marks or in, in the imperfections uh, the marks just help me find them and then we'll go back through sand that stuff off probably another layer of primer and then we'll repeat that until i go absolutely insane talk to you for a minute while i mix up some of this glaze i'm using this product here uh sim bumper bite flexible glaze this stuff is really nice. It's a lot more creamy than uh, body filler. Make sure you knead that hardener. This whole bodywork process drives me absolutely insane. Super repetitive. You guys know how I feel about sanding, but we're making progress. We got a nice spell of good temperatures here. I think the next two days are supposed to be close to 70, so I'm really on a final push to get this outside painted. You mix this stuff just like body filler. You want a nice consistent color throughout. And now I'll go chase down some imperfections and get them filled. I'm bringing you guys back in. We got all our spots glazed and sanded. I'm getting ready to spray everything with another coat of primer. Been sanding all day. This is like my own personal hell. And I've got gray boogers. I'll shoot this with primer, bring you back tomorrow morning. We'll take a look at how things look. We'll take a look at how things look. Inspect our work. It's the next morning and we've got everything uh, primed up. I'm happy to report we're getting super close. I've gone through and scrutinized the surface again and made our Sharpie marks. And we've got just a few areas that I'm gonna do a real tight wipe of filler on, glaze rather. You know, this stuff I had to chase down with a bright light source, you know, from a perpendicular angle, so some of these things are super small. I'm gonna go through now, hit all these with glaze, then we'll start blocking everything out with 220. At this point in the process, we've gotten past all of the mechanical sanding that we can do. I've got a whole stack of 220 grit paper here, and you're always gonna to wanna to use a sanding block. Here's a small version and a larger one. If you just handhold a piece of this paper, you know, you're not holding it flat. You'll end up with finger ridges and all sorts of weird stuff in your finished product. You always want to use the sanding block to keep everything flat. Quick focus in camera. And I like to uh, work in opposite directions. So I'll, I'll sand kind of a 45 bias this way. And then I'll switch up and go perpendicular to that. 
and that seems to get the best results. All right, so you can see this is the side we were just sanding compared to this side. And actually when you sand this high build primer, it actually lightens up a little bit. So I find using this particular product, you don't need any kind of guide coat. Some time has elapsed since I last shot some footage. As you can tell, the shop has been uh, significantly de-dustified. Really nice to not be swimming in dust around here, right, Daryl? We've got everything to a 400 grit finish. And man, oh man, this thing is smooth. Uh, as you can see, we've broken through in some spots into some filler and in some spots to the glass. Typically, you'd want to shoot some primer over those, but we're not going to. I'm done sanding. I went ahead and retaped the window and the back door. We're about to start moving on to finish color. Final color. How do you say that? Top coat. Super happy with how things are coming together. The first order of business, though, before painting all this stuff I've been working so hard on, is we need to paint the roof and from the bed line down, the bottom side of everything. Dale's gonna do his best to not get crushed, right Dale? We just got done playing a little Frisbee, so he's kinda of tuckered out at the moment, huh? Huh, he's a good boy. Dale's really happy that the dust is gone too. He spent way too much time in the house the last couple days. So what's up, kitty? Well, come here. Where are you going? Takes a little bit of dexterity here. Some arm action, some leg action. Look out, buddy. Huh. Easy as that. We got some runs up here I'm going to cut down with the DA sander and any other place that, you know, here's some fiber stuck, that sort of thing. We're not going to try to fill the weave up here. It's not visible and it's ultimately going to get covered with solar panels and uh, my cargo box. Finally time, as you can see we got everything prepped up and we've got the roof and the bottom taped off, protect all our hard work sanding on the sides. We're not really worried about appearance on this stuff because it won't ever be seen, you know, the bottom's the bottom and the top is above your eyesight line. Uh, we just got to get paint on them for the UV characteristics. Uh, epoxy resin doesn't like UV and it'll degrade its structural characteristics, that's why we have to paint it. We've got everything taped off down here as well. Again, just so we don't get overspray on the uh, good surfaces. And this, uh, this tape line that you see is well beyond the radius. So when we spray the, the finished portions of the panel, we will get a little underspray over here and that kind of thing, but all of that stuff will be hidden. One final look here. On these bottom corners, they may be slightly seen. So as you can see, I put a, uh, a bit of a radius there. That'll be a lot better than a sharp corner kind of drawing your eye to it. We've got the aluminum portions of our roof rack taped up so we've got no uh, no issues there. We're going to be painting with uh, just good old Rust-Oleum. We're going to be adding a uh, catalyst hardener to it and we're going to be reducing with acetone. We're mixing this stuff at a 4-3-1 ratio. That's four parts paint three parts reducer and one part hardener. I think I talked about this in the last video. This is uh, important you get this mixed well. You don't want to scrape the sides, the bottom. Really make sure everything's well incorporated. And as you can see, that ratio produces a very thin product. We're gonna be spraying this out of a uh, 1.4 tip. And you need it to be about this thin to go through a, a tip size that small. You don't want to be putting a bunch of trash in your gun. 
the old strainer back in the cup trick. And I gotta put my mask on now because, woo! But uh, we'll shoot some clips uh, spraying this stuff. Here we go. All right, it's the next morning. Today's the day. We're gonna get this paint process done. I'll give you a quick overview of the roof and the bottom real quick. As you can see here on the roof, lots of pinholes. You know, a couple extra ounces of resin would have really fixed a lot of this. But again, not a real issue. You can see uh, even with a non-prep surface, we got a nice gloss paint laid down nice so that's uh, reassuring for today and the bottom luckily a lot of this stuff doesn't show on camera but this is the kind of thing we spent all that time doing the sanding and the prep for you know any little imperfection really pops out but again this whole bottom side is covered by the uh, bedsides of the truck what I need to do now is put our runners on back into our hard points. A row of them there. And a row down there. We need to put the runners back on. We'll uh, pull the tape, deplastic, set this thing back horizontally, and get set up to put that final coat of paint on. Also, this is like the fifth or sixth day in a row that uh, put in a good 10, 12 hour day in this paint process. Really, really happy that this is the final day. Uh, you know, there's gonna be some imperfections, there's gonna be some drips, there's gonna be some trash that lands in it. We're gonna be okay with that because we're making progress. It is finally time. I've got everything wiped down. Uh, just went over everything with the tack cloth. We are ready to start shooting this stuff. Really excited, but also got some nervous energy. Just a quick shot. You can see reflection in that primered surface, which I think is a really good indicator of how smooth we have everything. It's pretty much time to put up or shut up. I think that's about it. Oh! All right, here goes nothing. I'm gonna do each side, I'm gonna do the back, and we're gonna end on the front. Got a bunch of hair. Get that out of there. Oh, bigger on there. Too bad. Oh, 
about an hour since we put this first coat on. Everything's sufficiently tacky now for coat number two. And just look at this thing. Wow. Let me see if I can focus in on some of this. Mm, you see right there, the big old Dale hair. There's one right there. You know, that's gonna happen. We're just gonna not touch that stuff and we'll hit it with a little wet sanding eventually. Super happy with how things are turning out. The second coat is gonna be a little more difficult than the first one. I struggle with the white on white, so I'll be using a uh, small headlamp and I've really got to play the light with my spray pattern to make sure I don't miss any spots. I've got some paint left. I'm going to mix up a little more and uh, we'll put you back on the GoPro here and get going. Okay, here we go. You see I got my headlamp on my gun. There's the old compressor kicking in. Shooting a little test pattern here, getting my gun dialed in. Okay, here we go. If you can't really tell what's going on, neither can I. Hopefully that's going to flatten out a little better. Alright, I need to call an audible real quick. I'm going to need some more lighting. Give it one of those. Now I'm just going to hold this light while I spray. That'll help, help me see things. Okay. Back to it. There we go. Tripping over all my cords and cables here. Make sure we don't have any crazy tiger striping or anything going on. We've got a nasty pattern up there.
decent. Alright, let's call that good. That's gonna do it for this episode. I am super stoked with the way everything turned out. Uh, I'd shoot some close-up shots, but this thing is reflecting so much light, being as that it's white and glossy, that the camera doesn't even really pick up the finish that well. Uh, you'll just have to trust me that it's just good enough for what we're trying to do. You know, there's obviously some, uh, some issues in the paint, but nothing crazy. You know, once this gets out in the sunlight, it is really gonna pop. I'm happy to report that at this point in the build, uh, the camper is completely usable. You know, we've already got the bed platform built. I've got a mattress uh, coming from the Amazon in the next few days, so expect some camping content soon. We're going to try to keep that uh, fun and lighthearted and entertaining. Really got some good ideas for that sort of content. The next couple videos you see out of me will probably cover some maintenance issues I need to address on the Toyota. Um, I understand that sort of thing's not for everyone. Uh, I'll do my best to not mislead you with any of my titles. Um, and you know, feel free to skip a video if it's not something you're interested in. Be that camping content, Toyota content, that sort of thing. We still got quite a bit to do on the camper. Uh, full electrical system, diesel heater, you know, the interior finishing. We gotta make this thing nice. So that stuff will be coming in the future. Know that there's some other sorts of content coming your way. Uh, if you enjoy my antics, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I am super close at this point to uh, that 1,000 subscriber mark. That uh, gets me into the YouTube partner program and potentially starts making me a little bit of money for these videos, which would be super awesome. We'll just throw that all back into the channel, into more cool projects and more cool videos for you guys. As you can see, Dale's already made himself at home. Uh, he's going to be real stoked when we're out doing adventuring. He loves a good truck ride and the camper is just a, a cherry on top of that. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time.